Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Integrating Power BI. I'm Tim Weinzaffel and in this video I'm going to talk about creating emails with Power BI paginated reports and Power Automate. Now in my last video I actually showed how you could embed a Power Automate button as shown here on this example directly in Power BI, select some records, push the button and then of course you'd have some automated emails pulling data directly from that visual and then going to the, the recipient. And in this case, you have an example here of a couple of emails being sent. But a question was raised to me of, could this be done automatically? Say you had a Power BI report and you wanted to have, say, emails uh, sent automatically, but without having to push the Power Automate button. Um, in other words, have it done automatic. And I looked into that and the answer was, well, yes, there's a way to do that by using paginated reports. So let me give you an example of what I mean by why you might want to use something like this. All right, so I've got a sample report up here. This is just a list of projects. Let's say I'm, I'm just looking at overdue projects and I've got a column here called overdue and I want uh, emails to be sent to say the project manager for an update. Now, in, uh, in the video I gave before, I talked about how you can embed, I've got a power automate button right here. I push the button if for all the ones that I might wanna select. And then again, have emails sent to those individuals, pulling in the data directly from this uh, Power BI report. But let's say I didn't wanna have to do this. Let's say I wanted this, an email to go out on a monthly basis, and also pulling in only these uh, projects that are marked overdue, and the other additional thing is, is this overdue column is actually a DAX measure so that every month it would automatically update overdue projects um, when the data is refreshed. And could that be done and then have all of those notices go out uh, through email to the respective individuals without me even having to do anything and even not even having to open up the Power BI report. And the answer to that uh, is it can be done if you use paginated reports. So for this video, I am going to walk through how I did that um, with a paginated report and Power Automate. And to help with this, uh, because sometimes going through a video and watching how it's done, I've actually uh, created a, um, uh, a blog where I'm going to be putting uh, a complete write-up of this approach as well. So you can actually refer to that. I'll put a link to that blog directly in the description here so you can access that. And that way, either A, you can follow along with the video, you can read the blog, or you can do both. And I'll have the full approach there on how uh, I approach this uh, use case. So let's jump over and let me walk through how this can be done. I've moved over to Power Automate because this is where the bulk of the work is done. And let me walk through sort of high level the flow. And this is how I approach things. Now, the first step, the first uh, action here, there, or the trigger is, you'll see it says manually trigger a flow. In this case, I use this so that I can use it for testing purposes because as I was building this out, I could then trigger the flow. Once this is completed, I can then delete this, uh, this trigger and replace it with the scheduled uh, trigger so I could say schedule this on a weekly or monthly basis. The next step then is to use the export data uh, function in, or the, I'm sorry, the action for to, uh, to export the paginated report data to a CSV, and I'll show that in a second. The next uh, big section here, and this is a whole bunch of steps, is all around taking the data from uh, my paginated report. Uh, I export it from a CSV format, and then converting all of that, doing some cleaning of the data and converting it to an array. And then the last step over here, which I will go through, is then cycling through every item, every record in that array, and then pulling out the uh, specific information because each record in that array represents uh, a, rec a row in my Power BI table. And then I can pull that out and use that information to send automatic emails. So let's just go through each and every step. All right, so the first step is the export data. And this is a very simple, if you go into when, in your action, it is in the Power BI connector. Uh, if I go to the Power BI connector, you will see export to file for paginated reports. And that's the one I used. Uh, I did rename it here just for uh, to know what I was doing. 
But if I expand it, it's very simple. It just asks for your workspace. Uh, you pull in your paginated report and then you give it the export format. There are a number of options. I actually used CSV because it was very easy to split the CSV file. There's a whole bunch of other elements here that I ignored. Uh, you may or may not need them because they give additional functionality. But the whole goal of this step is, uh, and it automatically will run that paginated report and convert it to a CSV file. Now, let's walk through the next part of this, and this is all around taking that output from that CSV file and converting it into an array. And if I expand it here, uh, there are four actions in here. These are all compose actions. So if I go up here, uh, I, the compose action works great. It is in the built-in and then the data operation, and it is the compose action, which is like creating basically a very simple variable. So I've got a couple of uh, cleanups that I needed to do. Now the first two uh, is was a little confusing. So let me do this. I'm going to jump over and show you the output of the export data because it's really important to see the output here. So here is the output of one of the runs. And you'll see there's six records. Uh, and it looks pretty nice. I mean, it looks like each here's each row of the each, you know, each row of the paginated report. But if you actually look at the raw output, what it really comes out as is just a long string of all those uh, those data items separated by a comma. Now, when I get to the end of a row, if I get to the end of this row, which these this first row is just the column headers of the report. So the last item will be project underscore list underscore email. When I get to there in this raw output, and I have to scroll way over here, what is going to happen is there will be a backslash r backslash n right here. A little hard to see. That is indicating then the carriage return for the new line. So what I need to do is split this entire text using this backslash r backslash n as my delimiter. And that's where the split function in Power Automate comes in handy. The downside is this looks to be just like text. So if I wanted to split this using that, I can use a, it can indicate what I want as a delimiter. It will not recognize it because these are special codes. So let me jump back and show how I did that. So here is my split function. So what I'm basically doing is saying, let me expand that here, is I'm saying split, and this first section is the output of this. And then the second parameter of your split function is to is indicating the delimiter. So what I could have done is just use the delimiter backslash r backslash n as my delimiter. That will not work though. What you actually have to do is, and I've got this previous step, and this is where I actually create the, del the, the delimiter, is I have to use, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hover over so you can see it, and again, I've, I'm gonna put in the coding here. What it is is I'm using, I have to use this decode URI component function, and then those are the codes for the backslash R and the backslash N, and then what I'm using is this concatenate function to essentially piece that together. So it's a little confusing, but this I made it very easy for me to create this. So this is now my my delimiter that I can now use in here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying split the output of this export data. So if I go to my dynamic content, uh, where is here it is. Uh, here's the uh, here's that first row of the um, and then uh, actually that may be the file content. But anyways, um, if I go over here and then I need the delimiter. So by creating this parameter, it makes it very easy to do. So hope that is helpful. Again, I include that in the write-up. Now, the only last thing I need to do is these last two steps is I have to do a little bit of additional cleanup. Let me jump back over to the output so you can see that. So if I look at the output now of this, you're gonna see this first row is the column headers. I don't want this, so I need to remove that. And then if I scroll down to the end, I have these two blank rows, which I need to do as well. So I needed to do a little cleanup. So let's jump back over and let me show you that. 
So to do that, I just have the first one is I remove that and there is a nice skip function. If I expand that, again, I'm skipping the output of the split data and then I just tell it how many rows to skip. In my case, I just want one. And then to remove those last two rows, uh, there is the take function. If I expand that, uh, the take function is simply telling it how many item records I want to take. And the, that's because I want to remove two records, I want to take the length of that uh, output from this previous step and then subtract two. So I'm simply saying take the output of this step. And then I have to use the add function, which is the length, the outputting the length of this and then I'm subtracting two here. And then that will remove the last two rows. And then the final output of this is a nice clean array, which I can now walk through and do the next final action. Let's walk through that final action here. I've got an apply to each. Uh, and again, if you go up here to uh, the, the control here, and it is in the control section, there is an apply to each because I'm gonna loop through every record. In fact, uh, let's jump back to, let me go ahead and delete this. Let's jump back to the output of this cleaned up data set. Essentially, I've got six records here. Here's the output. And I wanna loop through each of these records because each of these records represents uh, an email that I wanna send. And here's within each record is all the data elements for that respective email, including uh, the email address at the end that I'm gonna to wanna to do. So I wanna pull out all of this information in each row and then so cycle through each of these and then that will serve as the information I need. Let's jump back over to the flow. And now what I'm doing here is I'm cycling through the output of this previous step, which is that data that I just showed. Now, I've got a bunch of uh, compose actions here. These are optional, but what I'm essentially doing is taking the data out of that row and then putting it into a compose action because it makes my send an email step a lot easier. And I will show that. So, and I'm only really need to, well, let me first, before I do that, I actually have to do the first two items. This is, this I have to do. Um, because what I wanna do is I, this first action is a compose action, which is simply, Give, tell me what the current item is. So if I go into my dynamic content, it is what is the current item because it's pulling out that individual row. So it'd be just like as if I went and said, hey, give me, here's the current item, which is this row right here. Now I want to split that. And again, because if I scroll there, this is just data that is all separated by a comma. There's my delimiter. That's great. I can go up here to uh, and I can just split the output now of the current item with my comma as the delimiter. Now what I'm gonna do is, and let me jump over to show you an output of that. If I look at that, again, here's my current item, that nice little row of, of data. And then by splitting it, what you end up with is a nice, uh, a better structure with the way the what I wanted and you'll see all these and essentially all this is is just another array and with all of these different elements what I want to do though is I want to assign each of these to um, basically like a very simple variable so that it makes it easier so keep this in mind here um, as I walk through the next step and that's what this is going to do I want to take the project name and I want to put it here in this now in order to access Basically what I want to do is if I use the outputs function and then I indicate the out, uh, the out, and I, this was, I was, I, I typed this in. So I went, uh, let me see if I can retype it here. I want the outputs of the, it's the split current. It's this split current item step. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a question mark because I wanna indicate which specific element I want. Now this is, they use zero-based indexing, so the first item is actually going to be a zero, uh, and I don't actually remember which one I was gonna do, so I'm actually gonna uh, uh, get out of that. It's, I want the first element. I want the first item, which would be actually the second item in my array. If I jump back over here, I want this, which is the second item, but it is index number one. So. By doing that, by using the outputs, this outputs function, referencing that, and then indicating the uh, number one, I am assigning that to 
that value to project name and I just go through and do it for each one so for example project manager is the number two end date email and so on the nice thing about putting it, uh, the email into a function again is it makes it very easy then in my next action so now that I have all of these uh, sections of that data pulled into compose I can now go ahead and use my send an email step and complete my process very simple Again, I need to give an email, and because I have the email up here, there is the outputs of that, and that is just the outputs of this compose action. Uh, and again, I'm using, you know, need status for, this is the project name up here, and you'll see that. And then again, I just list out very simple uh, information. You'll notice here, though, in title and comments, because I didn't create those up here, um, I actually had to go ahead and do those. So here's an example where I actually had to hard code in then using the expression. So I actually had to hard code it versus say just selecting it from the dynamic content. So I find the creating the compose actions to make it just a little easier to use. So just to give you a, an example of different ways to approach things. And that's it. I mean, that's all I had to do. Um, now this could all be cleaned up. The email could be cleaned up nicer. I have other videos on how to, you know, make these emails look a little nicer, but from a uh, simple perspective, uh, that is all there is to using a paginated report, converting it with Power Automate to CSV, and then using these uh, additional functions to then send out automated emails. So that's the approach that I used to allow me to create automatic emails from a Power BI paginated report using Power Automate. So hopefully you found this useful and hopefully it might be something that you can even use in your, uh, you know, your everyday uh, experience as well. So if you did, please hit that like button. Uh, I'm gonna again continue to put out some more videos on how you can integrate Power BI with other applications. So thank you for watching.